I'm in uh, Terminal 2, Pudong International Airport, PVG. They have a small museum. You know, I've flown out of here a couple times now. I don't know when they got this up and running. The current exhibit is uh, model boats. Um, we're over in the D area. My gate to Los Angeles is D87. They'll start boarding in about... Uh, 30, 40 minutes, so I'll check out the exhibit and then walk back down. So just look uh, for D90, and uh, if, if you can't find it, say Bovuguan. I checked the bag, which I don't uh, normally do, and uh, I have my vase there from the Shanghai Museum of Glass that I made. I didn't want to uh, have too many bags and crack it. Plus, I was bringing back, I'd left a couple things that have friends, like moisturizer, and figured I might as well bring it back. Let's see. I stopped at the uh, Science uh, and Technology Museum earlier today offline, too. There's an easy way to get to it without going up and down so many steps if you go through the AP Plaza fake market in... Uh, the MTR station of the same name of uh, Shanghai Science and Tech uh, Museum. And then uh, got on the Maglev line two again to Longyang Station Maglev, zipped right over here. Ship in a bottle is a folk artifact that originated in Europe. Started by a captain when he had nothing to do on his long voyages, evolved into a fine craftsmanship after a long time of constant development. Most of the ships and bottles are famous ships in the various periods of history, ranging from ancient sailing vessels of Egypt as early as 2500 BC to the sail battleship of the 18th century, none of which are not history rich and of course are viewed as a compact treasure by model fans. Ship in a bottle needs longer fabricating time and high levels of complexity in the process of making ship in a bottle proportion and scale and superb skill are indispensable. Usually a ship model is supposed to be readied and split apart outside the bottle and then placed into the bottle with long pincers piece by piece. These components are then glued at the middle of the bottle or the bottom of the bottle as what it is like outside the bottle, including all the details like ship roll, mass, sail, and oar. It is particularly demanding for the maker to tie dozens of knots on the 15 uh, 1.5 millimeter wide beams with in thread. I was going to try to go to the Maritime Museum today, actually, which is out here in Pudong. And I don't know why I thought it was offline, uh, or I knew it was offline 16, but I thought I could connect from line 2 to 16. Line 16 collect, connects to line 9, so you can't really do that in a day when you're trying to go to the uh, airport. Silly. Unless you're going to take a bus from one to the other. Or a taxi. So this is a uh, Zhang He's treasure ship. He was a uh, Huai, which is the Muslim ethnic minority uh, eunuch who acquired enough uh, position. They think maybe too much. That's why he was sent off on these voyages, not as a admiral, but as a diplomat. I think he made a total of seven voyages to as far uh, some uh, theories that 1421 books said he discovered uh, North America but as far as Africa I think the general name for the ocean vessels in the fleet of Zheng He's voyage according to the overall survey of the ocean shores written by Ma Huen the translation officer in Zheng He's ocean voyages there are 63 treasure ships in the fleet the biggest one can be 160 meters long, 55.8 meters wide with nine masts, 12 rigs, and accommodate a thousand people. Appreciation of Chinese ships and bottles. This section displays various types of ships in ancient China. Typical of fortune ship, sand ship, and guang ship. The sand ships went back and forth uh, between uh, Shanghai and Beijing, if I remember right. 
and uh, carrying grain from the Jiangnan region, uh, rice. They talk about it at the CY Tung uh, Museum in Shanghai. The sand ships, I think, is where I saw that. Guang ship, I'm not familiar. These ships are able to adapt to various sea conditions and used for multiple purposes after centuries of development and improvement highlighted by the seven voyages made by Zheng He. These exhibits embody the intelligence of ancient Chinese. I, I think they're going, you know, from uh, along the canal, the Royal, the uh, Grand Canal. Chinese junk with three sails. One of Guang series. Taihu Basin. So from Lake Tai. Which is near Shanghai, not too far. Right? You get a good dose of stuff at the uh the stuff at the Hong Kong Maritime Museum. They just moved to Central from Stanley last year. They have the beautiful new museum. Red boat on the Southern Lake. Non-lake cruise is a flat bottom boat used in rivers and lakes in ancient China for recreational activities like sightseeing, chanting poems, and small talk while drinking. This boat is known for the fact that the first National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party was moved and renewed its session for this boat August 2nd, 1921, so it is also called Red Boat on Southern Lake. The story is that I heard when you go to the uh, first uh, meeting place of the CCP in Shintandi, they have a picture of the boat, and when their meeting was discovered in Shanghai, Mao and uh, the others had to flee across uh, to Nan Lake uh, and stay on the boat for safety because they were being run out by the KMT, I think, maybe, if I remember the story right. Either that or the foreign concessions were uh, not happy with a socialist agenda. Workers of the World Unite doesn't uh, do very well if you run a lot of factories. Let's see. Beyond River Passenger Ship. Beyond River Passenger Ship. It is Inland River Flat Bottom Ship, renowned for its superb construction technique in ancient China. It is the general name for passenger ship, cargo boat, cow ship, and other boats that appear in the paint called along the river during the Qingming Festival. That's the tomb sweeping festival. It has an array of cabins and towing mast in the shape of triangle mast that can be unfolded vertically at the top of the ship with oar, ship roll, and towing rope as the propelling force. Hmm. Yeah, so this is the boat. There's a famous painting called uh, the Qing along the river during the Qingming Festival. In fact, if you're in Shanghai and you go to the old uh, Expo, Chinese Expo building, which is now the National Art Museum, uh, you go into a special room the museum's free, I think you pay an extra 10 yen for that exhibit. And uh, they have it animated. They have the whole huge over life size animated uh, version of that painting. Here's the Chinese junk. You can see the fortified end here, huh? Fortune ship. Fortune ship is one of the four ancient ship types, the general name for the V-bottom ocean ship used in the coastal area of Fujian and Zhejiang province. As it's wave resistant and easy to operate, suitable for deep sea, it can be used as warships and ocean transport ships. The fleet of Zhenghe belongs to this type. The general trend in ships was to make bigger and bigger uh, castles. Um, Capstans at the uh, back there. And add more and more rows of guns. Fortune ship. You grab my bag. You ever see that movie message in a bottle? It uh, has. 
I think it's Kevin. Is it Kevin Costner? He gets lost at sea or something. I remember. Let's see. A trireme. This is what the Greeks were bandying about the Mediterranean and ramming each other. They'd have slaves uh, rowing. Actually, though, I thought I read somewhere recently that it wasn't slaves that were rowing, or it depended on the city. I think Athens had free men rowing, but Sparta had slaves. Anyway, when I was on the plane ride, where was I going? I watched Rise of the 300, and they show the famous uh, battle uh, where uh, Themistocles routes the Persians before the 300 do their thing at Thermopylae. Trireme, literally three tower, was an ancient warship used by ancient maritime civilizations in the Mediterranean, especially the Phoenicians, ancient Greeks, and Romans. It is 37 meters long, 172, 174 rowers on three banks with archers and darters on deck. And you'd ram, you'd have a metal bronze uh, prow, which is at the other end. And the whole idea was to broadside your opponent and ram them and sink their ship or raid, raid it. Ancient Egypt and sailing vessel. The history of shipbuilding by Egyptians can be dated back to about 3000 BC by at that time ancient Egyptians bundled Cyprus papyrus, a local weed, into the boat. About 2600 BC they made ship with cedar and fir. Hmm. They bundled Cyprus papyrus. Ah, I guess they're saying they made reed boats. Yeah. They made reed boats. Yeah. By about 200, 2600 BC, they made ship with cedar and firs. Based on all archaeological evidence, their ship is about 25 to 30 meters long with 15 towers on each board dating. Uh, door on each board during 1500 BC. Hmm. I've just gotta get a message to you. Hold on, hold on. One more hour and my life will be blue. That's the Bee Gees. What is the name? It's not. Is it "Message in a Bottle"? That song. Or I think it's. I think it's just. I have to get a message to you. Oh, I can't do the Bee Gees voice. Need a drink of water. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see. Roman merchant ship, Sea Wolf warship. Roman warship from 50 BC. When the Romans first made warships to go against Carthage, they built them with the timber still green and they sank. And the Senate had to go to the rich uh, aristocrats to get the money to build a second fleet to take out the uh, Carthaginians who had taken out the Phoenicians, I think, in turn. Roman merchant ship. It carried square sails on the main mast and another jib to increase the speed by enlarging the windblown area and wrap the hull below the waterline with lead to achieve enhanced erosion resistance. Keep off the barnacles, I guess. Galley sail ship. A galley is a type of ship that is propelled mainly by rowing and ordinary rowing. Warship also uses mast and rigs as the secondary propulsion. The galley originated along the seafaring civilizations around the Mediterranean Sea in the early first millennium BC and remained in use in various forms until the 19th century in warfare, trade, and piracy. Galleys were the warships used by naval powers, including Greeks, Phoenicians, Romans.
That had to be the worst life to be a uh, ship uh, oarsman there. I used to play a game called Ancient Rome. It was a sim game, and if you lost, instead of becoming emperor, they'd send you to the uh, be a rower on the ship, and they'd show the guy cracking the whip and beating the drum <laughs> at the end. Santa Maria sail ship. So this is a caravel from uh, Columbus's ocean voyage and the Nina. Actually, I don't think they were caravels, were they? They were ne ne Neos or something was the name. They have some. Actually, I'm going to Los Angeles in uh, the Maritime Museum in San Pedro. They have some model ships like this. And they have a model of uh, the Pinta, I think it is, or the Nina. The Santa Maria was a typical three-mast ocean sail, Carrick, in the Middle Age, about 23.66 meters long, 7.84 meters wide, and 120 tons in displacement. Used as Captain Columbus's flagship, it started its westward transatlantic expedition with another two ships, about 90 crew, set sail from the Porta Palace to the Indies and China on August 3rd, 1492, on 25th December, 1492. The sudden gust carried the ship onto a sandbank, running her aground off present-day site of Cap Haitian Haiti. She broke soon, and Columbus had to abandon the ship and decided to use the Nina as his flagship, leaving 39 sailors on the island to form a village of the Whites. <laughs> Good grief. And this one... The Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. <laughs> Remember that from Step Brothers? They make a rap on the dad's boat and crash it. <laughs> Nina sailing ship. Like Pinta, a three mast speed sail ship on uh, one of the Columbus Expedition fleet with 60 tons displacement. It was used as the flagship after their Santa Mary grounded off and discovered the American New Land with Pinta and returned to Spain. As it was tradition for Spanish ships of the day, she bore a female saint's name, Santa Clara. Nina, girl in Spanish, is the nickname by sailors. Interesting. They made a replica when I was down in Texas uh, in... Corpus Christi, they have a nice maritime museum down there. They were talking about, th they sailed a replica of the ship from uh, there, from Spain to, to there. That was one of the stopping points, maybe, anyway, when it got over here. It was Corpus Christi, and I thought they had it in port there in Corpus Christi. Maybe they bought it after the fact. I think I went on it at the maritime museum. It was all rotting away. Pinta sailing ship. Fortune ship. Pinta is a three-mast speed sail ship, one of the Columbus's expedition fleet. It was constructed by a local shipbuilder of Palos. As it is impossible to know its parameters now, it is estimated that the ship is about 23 meters long and 60 tons in displacement. After the Santa Mary grounded off, she together with Nina discovered the American New Land with Pinta and returned to Spain. Appreciation of Western ships and bottle. This section offers the audience a chance to glimpse at the steps of Western sailing vessel development by some famous Western ships from 2500 BC to the 19th century on display, including the Santa Marina, the Lenina Pinta, Columbus's Discovery of New Land, and the HMS Victory warship. This looks maybe like the uh, victory here. This is Trafalgar, Nelson's victory at Trafalgar, maybe. Over the French and Spanish fleet. Nope, this is the Golden Hen. This is what Francis Drake took when he was marking off territory for England. He sailed into uh, Northern California with it, they think. It was an English three-mast galleon, best known for circumnavigation of the globe, as the flagship in 1577, captained by Sir Francis Drake, 26 meters in length, 100 
with 150 tons of displacement and armed with 18 long-range guns. She was originally known as Pelican, but was renamed by Drake mid-voyage in 1578 as he prepared to enter the Straits of Magellan. The Golden Hind. Hmm. Another model of it there. An old brandy bottle. Let's see. We have a few more here. Brief introduction to the museum. China Maritime Museum. So is this a, uh, who's putting on this exhibit? That's what I mentioned earlier, the China Maritime Museum. It's over by the uh, new village that's got the round lake at the end of line 16. It's supposed to be the whole building's modeled after Zheng He, one of Zheng He's ships. It's a huge museum, too, for being so goddamn far away to get to. You can stay there overnight, see all of it. There's also a uh, Navy museum up in Baoshan at the mouth of the Wangpu River. I called them on my last trip. I wanted to go, and they gave me some BS about it's only for Chinese citizens that I, I wouldn't be allowed if I came to go in. A Moig. What was that? This one. It's a steamship, but it's still got sails. Le Napoleon Steam Battleship. 1849, France constructed the first sailing battleship with steam engine as the main power in the world. 71 meters long, 16.2 meters wide, and 1800 uh, and 1870 tons uh, 1,870 tons in displacement with 100 guns. Though it was driven by a steam engine, it still carried the rigs for assisting propulsion. The steam engine had a capacity of 960 horsepower and reached 12.14 knots only and 13.86 knots plus sail driven, making it worthy of the speed ship. It took the precedent, a large-scale screw-driven steam warship. Down in San Diego, they have a couple ships around the age of uh, combined sail and steam that you can go on. That's another good museum with actual ships that you could visit. Juan Sebastian de Elcano, Spanish naval training vessel, four mast, launched in 1927. Would that make it a bark because it has four? Forget the rules. I don't know what's up with their lights. Some are on, some are off. The Sphinx. It's a side paddle wheeler. 1829 France. HMS Victory sailing warship. So it's got three batteries. Four mast, three mast. Laid down, 1759. Royal Navy Dockyard Portsmouth, launched 1778, 108-gun magazine mass, three cannon deck, first-rate ship of the line. It was 69.3 long, 15.8 meters wide, 2,162 tons, in displacement with 8.50 crew. She captured the French Monoceros in her first battle as Lord Nelson's flagship at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. He defeated the Spanish Armada and the French fleet which started the era of British maritime hegemony. It is now in the second dock of Portsmouth Navy, open for visitors as the reputation flagship and museum ship. He led his uh, fleet into uh, the Spanish and, and French and cut them off from each other, went out in perpendicular. And uh, the idea of the ships was to broad, you want to put your broadside um, you know, with the triremes, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to expose your broadside. You'd want to use your, your bow to ram. But uh, in modern warfare, you want to line up as close as you can to broadside the next ship. And the way you sink is having a higher rate of fire, I think, or superior uh, circumference to your cannons. So you can shoot larger uh, cannonball and shot, and, and that's how you would sink. And so his method was to basically just uh, cause uh, inter 
interruption of the communication in their lines and refused to engage the superior force as a superior force. Chesapeake. Huh. Late 18th century United States. I guess it went up the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep on the plane. Hold on. Here's one of the sand ships. Now I don't know if the reason they got their their name the sand ship is because they were used for dredging along the Grand Canal that went from uh, what Suzhou to uh, Beijing and fed the consumptive city of Beijing all the grain that was growing in the south in the better climate area of the Jiangnan region south of the Yangtze River sand ship and see what they say Sand ship is one of the four ancient ship types, a kind of flat bottom ship used in ancient water transportation in China. As its bottom is flat in shape without keel, it is suitable for inland water, northern sea areas, the northern part of the Yangtze River, and Jiangsu, Zhejiang area. Hangzhou's in Zhejiang province, Jiangsu is Suzhou. Uh, Suzhou's in, Zhejiang, in Jiangsu province, and they uh, border here, uh, Shanghai. Guang ship. Guang ship is one of the four ancient ship types. It's kind of a V-bow and V-bottom ship used in coastal areas of Guangdong and Henan province, or Hainan, Hainan province? Not Henan, Henan is in uh, the center of the country, right? And then Hainan, Hainan is the island, tropical island. Guangdong's in the south too, Canton. Since it is V-bowed and well structured. It has good seaworthy capability like the fortune ship. It can be used as a warship and ocean transport ship. Hmm. You know, one of the nice things about Japanese ships, when I was at the Maritime Museum in Singapore, they pointed this out. You don't have to have a lot of rigging. Look, look how little rigging there is. You don't have to have sailors climbing up it either, especially in storms. And that's when you need to furl and unfurl a lot of the sails is when there's a storm and gales and things like that. And it's very, it's really dangerous. But because these have the cross beams on the sails, you can pull them up and down like, you know, uh, a pair of blinds. And so you get away without uh, having to have a uh, boatswain, you know, climbing up and down, getting swept away t at sea and all that. Bird ship doesn't give an explanation. Up oh, here it is, bird ship, one of the four ancient ship types, a kind of V-bottom cutter used in the coastal area of Zhejiang province of China, featured by beak-like bao. People in the kingdom of Yue in ancient China believe that it was the seeds of rice carried by birds that eventually created the prosperous land. Therefore, they built the bow of the ship in the shape of a beak. Since there is an eyebrow above the eyes painted at the bow of the ship, it is also called green eyebrow. Sometimes, yeah, you see the eyes right there. They had a lot of model of these in uh, the Singapore uh, what museum. Was it in Singapore that I went to? I guess the Maritime Museum had some, but there's another one that I went to. Not the museum on Sentosa Island, but anyway, they were talking about the differences between the color schemes and the eyes, I think and whether the ships were Fujian or from somewhere else, depending on the paint scheme. Green eyebrow. Green eyebrow is also called bird ship. One of the four ancient ships, kind of V bottoms, is the same thing. Used in coastal area of Zhejiang province, China. Hmm. It just says the same thing. Hold on, hold on, one more hour and my life will be through, hold on. Kind of rainy out today. When 
I was in Edinburgh, they had uh, at the Trafalgar uh, lookout tower there some details about the battle. Actually, I want to take some pictures before I go. I think I have time. It's a nice airport. You can get free Wi-Fi if you show your pass. Uh, passport just like in Beijing I think it's probably good for five or six hours